So let's look at the difference between theoretical and experimental probability. Theoretical probability is going to be that number of times an event can occur divided by the total number of out. Experimental is going to be what actually occurs when we collect that data. So there are going to be similarities and differences. It should actually eventually fit that theoretical, but the issue is sometimes the experimental does not match. So let's start with just rolling a six-sided die. I could sit and I could roll a die. And let's say I want to look at the probability of rolling a two. Now there's six different outcomes that I have, so the probability should be one in six. So if I roll a one, so I've rolled five times so far. So if that probability fits, maybe I should have a two on my next roll. I got another one, a four, and we've noticed that now with one. 10 different, I've actually had zero times occur. That doesn't mean it's changed what the probability would be. It's still one in six, but it's the difference between this theoretical probability of being one in six and the experimental turning out to be zero out of 10. Now, that doesn't mean the probability is zero, it's just in this experiment, maybe I haven't done enough. So what I can actually do is what if I had 10 different die? So I could roll these and see what I have. So now looking at this, I again have 0 out of 10. There's 2 out of 10. There's another 2 out of 10. Now there's 3 out of 10. So now that I've done it quite a few times, I've actually done 50 different attempts, I have 7 out of 50, which comes out to be about 0.14. Now, this was 1 sixth, which is about 0.167. So we could actually see they are getting closer and closer together. And maybe after having a large set of numbers, it does get closer and closer to this. So just because an experiment doesn't quite work in the beginning, and actually it looked like it was miserably going to fail with 0 out of 20 for the first ones, in the end, as these numbers get bigger and bigger, that law of large numbers is going to get us closer to it. Now, let's take another scenario. What if I was going to look at rolling an even? Now, if we look at our sample space, there's actually three different possibilities. So the probability is three out of six or one half. Now, let's just roll a couple of them at a time. Five and a three, two and a five, and then a two and a one. Now, if I look at this experiment that I did, I actually have four out of 10 by my experiment, so two fifths. So my experiment actually turned out to be less than the theoretical. It doesn't change the theoretical, but it's still now two fifths in the difference. So now look, what if I did the probability of rolling a greater than 1? So looking at my sample space, greater than 1 would be all of those. So there's actually five different options, so it's 5 out of 6. So we're going to get real quick, we're going to roll all 10 and find our greater than 1. So I got a 1 here, and the rest work. So this was. 9 out of 10. Let's do it again. We have no 1. 10 out of 10. We have 2, so that's 8 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Oops, we got one there, so that's actually 9.
and this one is 7 out of 10. So I got 43 out of 50 in my experiment. Let's see how that close that turns out to be. 43 out of 50 is 0.86 and 5 sixths is about 0.83. So they actually got closer and closer. If I just went off 10, then I had 90 versus 0.83, but it, it got closer as I went. Now let's change it and say, what if we roll two dice and look at the sum? Now we actually have a table we can draw here with all of our options. So one dice and the second dice, we have all these sums. And so we can fill it in. Now one and one is two. I can keep working my way through and we get to all of our possible values. So our sample space is any of these we have here. We actually have 36 different outcomes, but the sums, I could get two, three, four, all the way up to 12, and notice there's different amounts of them. So let's first look at the probability that I got doubles. So probability of doubles. So I have to look on here at all the ways I could get a double. So really I could have one plus one, two plus two, three plus three, and on down to six. So there's actually six ways out of 36 possibilities that I could get doubles, which is one sixth. Now I'm not going to roll too many of them, but we could start to see if we did an experiment. We have one, two, three, four. On the fifth one, so I have no, 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 yes, I got a double, so I'll do one more. There's another no. So really on those six, I got a one out of six, that was the doubles. Another no, no, and there's a yes on our number 10. So we actually had here really one out of six or two out of 10 was our experimental probability. So it actually came up a little bit more in our experiment than the theoretical. Okay, what if we did the probability that if I rolled a sum of, not 10, let's go sum of seven. So we look at all the occurrences that it happens here. And there are six occurrences. So that is also one sixth. And so I can sit and roll here again and get a probability. What if I did the probability, probability of a sum greater than nine? So now I look at all of my possible values and how many ways it could, could occur. Now I know I have 36 because there's 36 different outcomes. So the ones greater than nine would be this set here, which is six, so we'd have one sixth. And I realize now that all of my examples have now given the same probability of one six. Let's just throw one in that won't be one six. How about the probability it's even, an even sum. So we can count all the occurrences. We have one, two, three, four, and 18 different occurrences. So we get 18 out of 36, which turns out to be one half. So there's a one half probability that I would roll an even sum. So now let's move on to some coins and flipping coins. Now I know if I flip a coin, I could get either heads or tails. And so if I looked at the probability of heads, it's one out of two occurrences. And I could sit and I could flip one, a single coin over and over again and say, and see what I would get. And even though I may get a large Like here, of heads, eventually, if I have a large enough uh, number of events, it should get close to one half. Now right here, I have four heads out of five, so it's four fifths, which is a lot more than one half. But right now, if I flip this coin again, there's no different probability of one half at occurring, even if there's been a lot of heads. Still one half for each event, but right now for that experiment that I did, I happen to get four fifths. Let's look if I flipped, um, multiple coins. So let's say I had three coins and I wanted to look at the probability that all three are heads. 
So let's draw out how that occurs. So I have a first coin, and I can either get heads or tails. And from the second coin, I get heads or tails. And then the third coin. So I could actually draw out, all, write out all of the options that I have. So my sample space is heads, 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 tails. It's going here. Then I go heads, tails, heads. Heads, tails, tails. Tails, heads, heads. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. And all tails. So this is my sample space. These are all the options that I could get. I actually have eight different outcomes. So the probability of getting all heads is one out of that eight. Now what if we wanted to look at some different? Maybe the probability that I get two heads. This one, this one, this one. So there's actually three cases where I would get two heads. So that would be three out of eight. Maybe we want to look at the probability that I would get at least two heads. So that's taking two heads and also taking account that we have three heads. So I'd have one, two, three, four different options. So that would be a one half probability. So then we could also do the experiment from that and flip these coins and notice what I get. So here I got two heads and a tails. Again. So I finished my eight and here are my eight events in my experimental probability. So let's look to see if we, we matched them. So up here I said the probability that all heads is one eight. So in my experiment I didn't get any that were all heads. So the probability of all heads in my experiment turned out to be zero out of eight. Probability of two heads. So I had one, two, so that was two out of eight, which was close compared to three out of eight. We're one, one event off. And the probability that I got at least two heads. I had one, two, and it looks like I got real tails happy here at the end, so that turned out to only be two out of eight. The theoretical needs to be what you can calculate and the experiment it may be close it may be off but it's trying it and find where your probabilities turn out.